Time's Arrow, or The Nature of the Offense is a 1991 novel by the British writer Martin Amos. It recounts the life of a Nazi doctor, Odilo Unver Dorbin, in reverse, from the moment of his death to the moment of his birth. Time's Arrow was nominated for the 1991 Booker Prize. The novel begins on the operating table, somewhere in the United States, where Odilo dies. The narrator of the story is an entity that inhabits Odilo's body and witnesses everything that happens to Odilo, but cannot act in any way. Although the narrator is articulate and knowledgeable and has strong opinions about what he sees, he does not recognize that he is witnessing Odilo's life in reverse. As a result, most of what he sees is baffling to him. For instance, when paramedics arrive at the scene of Odilo's fatal car crash, the first thing they do is administer CPR. However, the narrator experiences this as the last thing the paramedics do, and he interprets the CPR as a farewell kiss. The narrator gradually pieces together the circumstances of his life. He is a retired German-American doctor living in upstate New York. His name is Todd T. Friendly, we will learn shortly that this is a pseudonym. He lives a quiet, lonely life. When he starts a conversation at the grocery store, the dialogue takes place in reverse. How are you today becomes aid you to Waira. Todd's personal life is troubled. He has a drinking problem. He has terrifying dreams about babies and doctors. He has a series of sexual relationships, but he struggles to make an emotional connection. There is something in his past about which he is refusing to think. Todd gets stronger and younger and moves to New York where he calls himself John Young. Another German-American, Nicholas Creditor, causes the name change by telling John that the authorities are onto him. John works in a hospital. To the narrator, his job seems to be hurting people. A patient arrives bandaged, John takes a nail from the trash, pushes it into the patient's forehead and sends him away screaming. Outside work, he is a womanizer, compulsively pursuing sexual relationships in which he can wield and abuse emotional power over his partners. John leaves for Europe, or rather, this is how the narrator interprets John's reverse journey from Europe. The ship travels into its own wake, as if we are successfully covering our tracks. Arriving in Portugal, he changes his name to Hamilton de Souza. Then he travels secretively through Europe to Germany, where his name becomes Odilo Unver Dorben. Odilo works at Auschwitz, where finally his job makes sense to the narrator, because he seems to be creating people in the thousands. Our preternatural purpose? To dream a race. Odilo is an assistant to Uncle Pepe, who is in charge of this magical project. Amos enables the reader to identify Uncle Pepe as Joseph Menchel, the doctor who conducted experiments on inmates at Auschwitz. The Jews created at Auschwitz are united into happy families and placed into prosperous lives. The narrator does not understand why Odilo's wife, Herta, disapproves of this work. Odilo has a child, Eva, who dies soon after she is born. The narrator is disappointed when Odilo is transferred to a facility which creates blind and disabled people instead of Jews. He misses the great work being achieved at Auschwitz. Odilo becomes an officer in the Waffen-SS. Under his direction, Jews are released out from ghettos and placed in homes. At this stage of his life, Odilo is sexually impotent. The narrator suggests that there is a link between Odilo's omnipotence over the Jews and his impotence with Herta. Earlier in their relationship, Odilo requires Herta to do the housework naked on all fours. Now Odilo attends medical school, where he meets Herta and is part of the reserve medical corps. He moves in with his family and starts to shrink becoming a child. For the first time in the narrative, Odilo is untroubled by guilt, he is innocent, emotional, popular, and stupid. Finally, he enters his mother's body and waits for the moment when his father's sperm will withdraw, which the narrator recognizes will be his end. In his final moments, the narrator has a vision of an arrow flying the wrong way, that is, feathers first. Time's Arrow explores the themes of reason and science, morality and guilt, and power both political and personal. Although the novel's reception was largely positive, many critics were uneasy about Amos's use of a striking stylistic trick to tell a story of such moral and historical gravity. Amos's cleverness has a glare why insistence to it. The Holocaust couldn't care less about his ingenuity, Kirkus reviews. 
However, Time Zero is regarded as one of Amos's major achievements and a significant contribution to postmodern British fiction. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.